what's good what's good i'm nft qt and you are now watching the nft qt show and this is episode 30 so for everyone that's joining us live welcome you know i, I think we've made it to our 30th episode that means we've done what like uh 30 laps right yeah yeah it's a couple miles yeah i mean that's that's actually pretty dope so yeah, yeah and this is i think like the fifth video episode so that's been exciting as well like like the feedback and we're getting better at it so with that being said as many of you know all of these episodes are brought to you by the nft handbook you can go ahead and get your copy of that on amazon or wherever books are sold it's in all the booksellers we just got a new translation a thailand translation which i didn't even know that there was a different language that was spoke out there but i learned that over the past week so shout out to everybody that's uh tapping in and going and getting the book and grabbing it not only in the states but internationally i saw some people out in russia that was rocking with it and for those of you that don't like to read guess what you can check the book out on audible because that's also an easier way to access uh the content and we're, we're trying to make it as accessible as possible but with that you know today's going to be a special day because we're going to be joined by mark who is the founder of metamundo and Metamundo is a marketplace for 3D NFTs. And the whole concept here with Metamundo is they want to help create the interoperability as it relates to metaverses. And so NFTs, for those that are just getting up to speed, are digital collectibles, or you can, you, it, I look at it as a, a format to create digital scarcity, right? So there can be an MP3, but if you make an NFT of that MP3, there can only be X number of editions of that MP3, and those editions can have value beyond the digital file that's interoperable. But what Mark is doing, the way I understand it, is they're creating, you know, the the standard at which these NFTs can go from a Roblox to a Decentraland to a uh, you know, spatial. And so, Mark, if you're in the building, we'd love to bring you up. Hey, Q. What's, What's up? It going? What's it's up? been good, man. It's been good. I'm, I'm I'm proud of everything that you're building. I think that this is, the, this is, these are the exciting times when it comes to Web3. Thank you. Yeah, we, we're definitely, we're definitely trying to solve some big problems, right? Like there's some real, and that's, and that's why we're in it. That's why, you know, that's what gets you up in the morning as an entrepreneur to solve some tricky problems, to try and, to try and add value to many people, um, as many people as possible. And like you touched on it, right? Like we've got, we've got NFTs. They're an amazing way to validate that you are the, and you know, authorize that you're the true owner of that asset and you know, it's time stamped and the artists get royalties in perpetuity and you get all the amazing things with smart contracts. But we had an amazing summer last summer with the summer of 2d I'm calling it. Right. And this summer, the next summer is going to be the summer of 3d. This all is, right. Uh, all right. This is what, so this what, is what, what winter is it right now? Is it the winter of like 2.5 <laughs> or what's the intermission? It depends where you live, right? It could always be summer. That's true. That's true. <laughs> nice, nice catch. Or so then is that so I, I see, I see what you're doing here. So that, you're that's the best this, yeah. is, this is the AR summer. Or I mean the AR winter. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Arctic. No. I, no, no. We got I mean and we're building up to it, right? It's just one yeah, big yeah. build up. So I'm I'm ready. I'm we're getting ready. Um I mean, I just wanna like just take a step back and let's talk about like Metamundo and what it meant to create that because when I see Metamundo, you know, obviously I'm living in the future, so I see all the possibilities that that can exist with that. But walk us just through the process for a creator, someone that is just seeing it for the first time. Maybe they know Photoshop, maybe they know Illustrator, maybe they know uh, ZBrush, but they see Metamundo. How can they get get involved in in, in join the Web three of three D summer that you're, you're you're proposing? So we 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 first. So the, there's a few approaches to how we, what led to us cr to create Metamundo, right? The, the few, th is, we've obviously had a huge amount of hype around the metaverse. Um, obviously Facebook changing its name to Meta, the big announcement that Meta is hiring 10,000, you know, 3D creators in Europe. Wait, 10,000? I, I missed 10, that announcement. 
Really? They, they got 10,000 job vacancies for to to work on on Horizon, uh, the Meta Horizon. Whoa, they're trying to hire just everybody. I they're mean, hiring anyone everybody. that's good, right? Like anyone that's good, even if you have a degree, no degree, whatever, 10,000, that's a lot of people. Like that's a, It's a huge amount. Yeah. Um, Put that in perspective, I, Ryan. Like how many stadiums are like, just give me a, 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 a good visual for 10,000 people. Uh, for like your typical basketball stadium is around 25 to 30,000. So it'd be like half a stadium, basketball stadium. If you're talking Super Bowl, it's, you know, it's going to fill up the the front, you know, 15, 20 rows of the stadium. Mark, that's, an, uh, that's absurd. You could fill half a basketball stadium with all of the developers that Meta's hiring for 3D. And, 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 and do you know what? I doubt if they'll be able to fill all those positions, right? There's just not enough 3D creators out there. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting to. Cause it's not like you can just yeah. go and jumpstart and get a start a 3D career. Oftentimes, like, I mean, you might know this better than me, but like, uh, I mean, th- three, how many tools are there really to create 3D assets? I know there's Blender. I know there's Maya. Uh, 3DS Max. Yeah. 3DS um, Max. What else? Yeah, you've got uh, Sketch, SketchUp. Yep. You've got like, uh, you've got a bunch. You've got like Rhino. You've got okay. Uh, but, the, but all of those tools have a very hard learning curve. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. and and that's and that's it. Like, you can't just pick this up. You no, have to, no. Three years yeah. minimum, I think, to get good, where you could get a job at Facebook or Meta. For sure, for sure, and. And and you know the the thing is is that they're hiring ten thousand three D creators to make the Zook richer, right? Mm-hmm. And what I believe in, and what I want three D creators to believe in, is let's work on the open metaverse. Let's get let's enable all of those ten thousand three D creators. They can either work for Meta, or they can work on building together with this Web three community that we're all part of the future of the web, right? Where we all own a little part of it. And um, that was one of the triggers for us to, we we were already working on Metamundo before Meta announced, but it obviously accelerated our plans. And it also validated our assumptions that, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to be moving into this Metaverse, right? This, this web where the we experience, which is more social, more 3D, we're going to need a lot of people to to design it and to make it and build it. Right? Well, interoperability is something that's close to my heart because I worked in healthcare in the U.S. for a while, and and just seeing how messed up things can get when you don't have interoperable standards, and and in healthcare, you know, actual lives are on the line. Here in in the metaverse, it's not necessarily lives, but it's something that's equally important. It's the the actual money right like i mean these assets digital scarcity means value cryptocurrencies have value and we tie that to fiat currencies or we tie that to goods that can be exchanged but these assets like no one is going to question me if i say yo i want to buy a nice house or i want to buy a nice house and so that's that's you know i got to build that that's unique i can customize it then i got to fill that house with stuff right and if i go get a couch and I spend two, three grand on a couch, no one's going to balk at that. They'll be like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a nice idea. But if I go into the the, the metaverse and I drop in a, I, I don't know, spatial, decentral land or any of these, these spaces that we've been in and I spend, you know, let's just say two ETH on a sculpture, people are going to look at me a little crazy. And, and this is, this needs to be solved. This is the big, this is the big problem, right? Like yeah. JPEGs, JPEGs, they're interoperable. Mo- everyone recognizes a JPEG as a file type. For sure. Uh, but Decentraland says, well, we want GLTF. Okay. Uh, cri- crypto voxels say they want .vox. Yep. And box say they want .vox. Each open metaverse has different requirements for these file types, right? So it's a whole, it's a whole different ball game with 3D. And the thing is, is if you're a 3D designer and you get good at GLTFs or GLBs and you don't know how to make your stuff look good, and is it dot .votx you said? D- dot .vox, dot dot .vox, and dot .vox. If you don't know how to make your stuff look good at dot .vox, uh, you're losing on money. And then, and then uh, let, let's say also avatars, for example, a VRM. It's all a, uh, it's a very fragmented industry at the moment. I, I want to oh. talk to you a bit about those avatars too. So you finish your thought, but I, we're going to jump back to that. 
Yeah, for sure. We'll jump into Arbitaz. So what we're, you know, let's just touch with our unique solution at Metamundo. I'll just uh, pitch that first is um, what we're saying is, and we've built our own smart contract architecture. So what we're saying is, yes, right now you can buy just one 3D NFT for Decentraland or one for Sandbox. But if it's one artist making one creation, who's saying, hey, this is my IP. This is, you know, you're going to become the owner of this. You're going to become the verified owner of this design. We need to make that design work in all of them, right? We need to have that value spread. We need that interoperability. So what we're doing is we're saying to the 3D creator, give us your best high quality value, high quality, high polygon count 3D file, the most future proofed for future metaverses 3D file you can get, which even could be, you know, film quality uh, 3D file. We take that, that is your master parent NFT. And then we make optimized child NFTs and you get one bundle and these optimized child NFTs will work in each individual metaverse. Mm. So that's our solution. So you get this bundle of NFTs, but you get this initial creation, the original creation, you get the, you know, you get the copyright, you own, you own that NFT, you get it straight from the creator, and then it's going to work in all of them. And as time goes on, as more metaverses appear, we're going to even add more versions to that bundle. So it's real, it's a no brainer, really, you're going to get a 3D asset that is there's going to be, you can have that for the rest of your life, right? That's for the future. No, that makes a ton of sense. That makes a ton of sense. Uh, I want to talk about avatars because you mentioned something and I find avatars one of, as one of the more fascinating elements of the metaverse that isn't widely talked about, right? Like I think people say, oh, I have this avatar. I can customize it. I can throw custom clothing on it. We can do this fashion show. But avatars to me represent so much more. Like when you think about video games and you think about non-playable characters and how they're used to create story arcs and tell stories, that largely hasn't been as as explored as much as I thought it would be at this point in the metaverse. And I think on a, on a, on a portal that like Metamundo is offering where I can go to this marketplace and, you know, I can get these interoperable standards. How do you envision the, 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 that arc of, of avatars? Cause I think I don't, I probably won't go to your, your marketplace to get, you know, the, the, like Q Harrison's avatar per se, but I might go to your, your marketplace to go and get like, you know, the avatar bot that represents like, you know, how music is like, cause I think they're like, you know how we have bots in discord and how the, like, there's a music bot that I have in one of my discord channels and it plays music for us. Right. And you can go and request more, uh, like, it's like a jukebox. You can go request and, and, and it plays the song. But that's a bot. And that's in Discord. That's the 2D world that you, you talked about. When we go into this 3D summer, uh, there's going to be a non-player character that, or a non-player avatar that lives in my, 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 my space, my virtual space. And they're like my personal DJ. And it's, it's going to function similar to the bot, but that's going to be a custom non-player character or non-playable character. And like, I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking that I'd be able to get that from Metamundo, right? That's, that's the future, right? That is, you know, so I, I, I just want to touch on, you know, like the PFP projects. Okay. Like the, so that this is the start of the avatars, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and this is why I'm so bullish on having more and more PFP projects. Like that's an interesting okay. take. You know, you came to NFT QT show, and I hate <laughs> PFP projects. So uh, you, you well, got to you got to defend yourself here. Are you ready? For, are you ready for the justification? Okay, go for so, it. Go for it. Everyone will need their own avatar. You know, in the next X years, because we're going into the metaverse, right? You, everyone wants their own digital identity. Everyone wants to feel like they're part of a tribe. If, if right now, you know, every PFP project has, look, I agree. There are many, there are a few too many PFP projects at the moment coming out that are not high quality enough, but if we have quality PFP projects, I'm going to this quote here, Clonex, right? 3d NFTs, great, great team behind it. Um, this is going to be a digital identity. You, you will at some point, whether that's also me bits as well, which we, we've been working with a partner on making me bits interoperable. 
these PFBs, these 3D avatars, if these are your digital identities, if this is your tribe, if this is your clan, right, and you're cruising around in the metaverse, being a member of this clan, representing that clan, we need more PFPs. We need more 3D avatars because people want to be part. So I, but I also believe, you know, we're going to have more re, th like actual 3D realistic avatars of ourselves. But some people just want to go, some people want to have an alternate, you know, identity online and that's okay. No, that's that. You know what? I, I, I respect, like, if you're saying we need more projects like Meebits and, and for the people that don't know, they're just listening, watching. Uh, Meebits was uh, Larva Labs, right? They they created oh yeah, so Larva Labs, Meebits. Larva Labs also is the the team behind CryptoPunks. Difference between CryptoPunks and Meebits is Meebits are through like aren't they are they GLB files or what are they? I think it's a, it's a VRM file. You get a so, so, yeah, so you, you get a, you get a three D file of your Meebit. Yes. Um. So you so yeah the intention and. Uh, we've seen it happen and we've been working with some great people that are actually making it happen where you can actually get your me bits and yep. you could cruise around in different virtual environments, different worlds, different games as your me bit. So I sold my me bit. I had a me bit. I let it go. I, I didn't find the project that fascinating, but the concept is actually very, 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 very uh, thought provoking. And here's why. With the JPEGs, you get a cool like social media avatar. But to Mark's point, if there were a lot of these 3D uh, projects where you it's 3D P PFP or avatar PFP projects, uh, it would actually put an incentive on the platforms. So you think about the crypto voxels, the Decentraland, Sandbox, Spatial, whatever, or Horizon even too. Uh, it would put an incentive on them to basically allow for people to bring those characters to life very soon. Very similar to how Twitter uh, basically said, look, we're going to drop blue. And because people are paying us, we're going to build this new feature. We see all the things that are happening in NFTs and people are changing their profile pictures. We're going to actually build the crypto wallet integration directly into our main app. And I don't think that would have ever happened at the speed at which it did if there weren't enough users already on the platform showing and exhibiting this activity. Uh, and, and, and they needed a way to verify that, like, you actually have Board Ape, you know, 2923. The CryptoVoxes is working on it. So it's going to happen. Oh, it's so going to happen? Will, yeah, yeah, it's going to happen. You will be able to, um, you will be able to go with your MeBit in CryptoVoxels, attend mm -hmm. parties, go to, a, go to an art gallery. It's happening. It's 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 it's, it's in the works. That's so dope. this is why we this is why we like to have Mark on the show, man. You're welcome to come anytime. You're you're spreading the the news, and you know I I, I for those that don't know, you're telling us about everything that's happening elsewhere, and then in the 3D summer that's coming, you've got a big drop yourself. Yeah, we do. Yeah, do so. So we, you know, we at Metamundo, um, we. We set out to build this business seven months ago to solve a, the you know the core problem of 3D interoperability, but also we need to we need to get this army of 3D creators building the metaverse, right? Mm -hmm. We've got to make it a super exciting, interesting place. So we're building um, we're building the 3D NFT marketplace. We're building the metaverse, mm -hmm. um, and um, as a showcase of our technology and to create a real unique community. We're launching um, the Meta Portal. And this will be, it's the first NFT, it's, we're calling it a device of its kind that will allow transportation across the metaverse. We're currently going to, to start with, it will work in Decentraland, CryptoVoxels, Spatial, Somnium Space. It will be a portal that you can put on your land or in, for example, Spatial's case, you can put it in, in, a, in a space and environment in Spatial and you'll be able to walk through it and it'll transport you to a different part of the metaverse. It's going to take you, if you're the owner of this meta portal, it will take you to, we, we were about to launch and release a bunch of partners and announce an incredible list of partners. Um, 
and these partners are going to work with us to enable this device to give you access to parts of the metaverse that you would not think you know was possible so i mean just some uh, some example perks and this is obviously just ideas that we're thinking of is you know you could end up backstage with the paris hilton avatar at the decentraland festival or you'll get special access to snoop dogg's house in the sandbox um you'll be able to get access to a, the opening of an nft art gallery in crypto voxels you'll get to go to a cool uh, a DJ party, you know, with, let's say, Dead Mouse. Um, so we're working with a bunch of partners to basically, really, if you have this thing, first of all, you'll have access to an exclusive Discord channel, which will give you to give you all of these rights to these kinds of parts of the metaverse. It's going to connect the open metaverse and promote uh, and foster that connectivity. Uh, so we're all, you know, working me. We're all in this together, right? To... <laughs> I heard that. I heard that drop. I heard that drop. We all gonna work like me. We're all gonna make it. Yeah, we're all gonna make it. We're all gonna make and it. it should be, you know, wag meat. Really, we're all gonna make it together. And um, <laughs> from a wag meat, you can't be out here saying that. <laughs> quote, <laughs> quote, quote me, quote me on that one. And it's gonna be wag meat. <laughs> wag meat. My God, so that wag wag meat, yeah. Um, yeah, we got, we got to, we got to connect all of these places. Right. And, uh, no. um, if we're saying, if we're saying we're going to try and like, get, it's one NFT for the metaverse, it's a showcase of our interoperability. Um, but we're only dropping 1500, right. That's a, yeah. it's, it's a small amount because we want to get it into, you know, the best hands possible. So, like, so the pioneers, the advocates. I mean, I, I'm definitely going to participate in this. Is there like a whitelist? Is there a drop? What do we, how do we, how do, how do we get in? So, um, join our discord, discord, uh, dot DG, GG slash meta mundo. Follow us on Twitter. We, we're going to be doing a few whitelists, spontaneous whitelists. Um, you're going to also, uh, see instructions in our discord on how to get the whitelist too. And, and, um, and when is the drop happening for the people who are listening? The drop is on the twenty second of February. Okay, um, oh, I love I love how you're giving people some time, man. That's ten days from when we're recording this. But the cool thing about that is that's that just putting the time in front of it and showing the roadmap and doing what you're doing. I don't think a lot of a lot of creators, from what I've seen with thoughtful projects, they've been doing it, but they haven't been doing it at this at this rate because what I've realized is in a crazy market right now where, you know, Ethereum is dropping and, you know, it goes back up and it drops. It's just all over the place. Uh, there's a lot of people that's pulled their money out of crypto. And if you're dropping an NFT right now or any type of project, giving someone a proper lead time so they can onboard back in or on ramp into uh, the, these different projects, it makes a lot of sense versus doing these, oh, overnight, like tomorrow we're dropping. Because if you do that, guess what? You might miss out on someone that really wanted it, but now they have to buy it on the secondary market and the price is too high and they don't want to buy that much Ethereum. Look, I, I, I want to make this really clear. We're, this NFT drop for us is not about making money, right? We, we're actually we're offering it a reasonable uh, 0.15 ETH. We raised our funding. We have backing from you know, some of the best leading metaverse funds and investors, mm -hmm. you know, it's not about the money. It's about making the best metaverse community. We can, the, the, the we want to get diamond hands in there. We want to get people that want to work with us to build. Uh, we, we, we really don't mind if we don't sell out straight away. I mean, the demand is there for sure, but it's about the long term of this project. We've got like, we've got six people on our team we're growing to 12 already like next month um we're in this for the long term to solve some of these hard problems okay. that need to be solved to build this metaverse so if you if you've if you pulled out of ethereum um i'm sorry you have but you're gonna have to get back in again and we're gonna give you the time to get back in and, and get <laughs> get that ETH back in your wallet if you pulled out of ethereum wow you're you're, you're calling calling shots you you don't know my theory on ethereum where I, we don't have time on this show for me to go into it, but, um, I mean, do you agree that we're in a crypto winner or a protein one? I, 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 I don't dare comment on that. That's, uh, 
I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a crypto trader. I'm, you know. Oh, so it sounds like you're, I, you're on the same side of me. You're, you're with me here. I'm, I'm, I'm in this, I'm, I'm in this for the tech, right? Okay. So, all right. So, all right. So, dude, then, all right. Then that's all it is. I'm not going to put you in a, an awkward spot. We like having you here as a guest, but, I um, say great, the great, one of the greatest inventions of the past, you know, this century is the Ethereum virtual machine. It's changed. It changed everything. All right, I'll, 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 I mean, I would have picked a different device, but I respect that opinion. Oh yeah, what would you choose? You said of this of this decade or generation? Uh, I, yeah. What did they say? This, uh, this I would say <laughs> this uh, this century. Yeah, so this far. Century, century is what fifty years or twenty five. He he's saying the new millennium, the last twenty two yeah. years. Last twenty two years. Twenty two years. Oh well, then, dude, that's easy. I would say uh, I would give it to the iPhone. If we're if we're, if we're doing twenty two years, it's the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, wow. I'm not old, am I? Yeah. No. <laughs> I remember. I remember when the first iPhone came out. Wow, that was a long time ago. Well, I remember okay. when it, it came out too. But I think that the thing is, is like it past ten to... years. Then past ten years. Okay. Case. Past ten years. What is it? Twenty. That's twenty twelve. Between twenty twelve yeah. and now. Okay. Um. That's actually a great question. I, uh, cause then Bitcoin is even etched out of that. I, w- I was going to say that that Theranos invention was the best invention of the last decade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that worked out well for Elizabeth. I'm sorry, but now that, I mean, you know, that's actually a really good question. If we look at 2012 and now there's not many new devices. I might have to agree with you on the Ethereum or just blockchains in general, even though that if you want to quote the first blockchain, we would be etched out because I think Bitcoin came out in what, 20... 08, 07? Oh, yeah, or 09, I think. Mm-hmm. Yes. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin with the white paper, I, came, I think, came out then. So it would be, we would be etched out. But yeah, I like your, your theory on that. But I have to think, you know what I'm going to give it to in the last 12 years? I'm going to give it to the Cybertruck. It's not, that's not even out yet. I, <laughs> I, <give> that. <laughs> I, I, I want you all to drop that thing. So uh, yeah, we just gotta we gotta tell Elon to drop the Cybertruck. Yeah. Oh no, well, if, in all fairness to um, Tesla and electric batteries, that's been a you know they they pretty pushed it. They have. And, and yeah, that's uh, as inventions go. That's probably the, one of the best. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, I love where your head's at. You're definitely a future thinker. I know we're almost at time here on the show. Uh, the meta portal is is very very fascinating. The reason why we brought you on the show and we wanted to make this happen, and we're recording even on an odd day, is because your vision for the project and what you're doing at Meta Mundo is just very incredible. And this is what the future looks like. It's it's pioneers and and people like you that just are really saying, hey, let's not worry about the price. Let's look at the tech and let's see what the standard can be. And if that precedent hasn't been set yet, what can we do to etch, etch that in to society as a whole and give it back to the communities that are creators and also, uh, I would just say, purveyors of culture? Because you need the creators to build those 3D summers, as you would call it, but you need those cultural uh, thought leaders to come in and, and just bring the people together so you actually can crystallize those communities. And I know Cowdery has a, a question because he's raising his hand. You can't see it, but he's off screen. <laughs> Nah, Mark, I, I mean, because you're, you know, I mean, you're probably your whole day revolves around 3D creators and what they're creating. And I think for a lot of us, it's like you, know, you see maybe the Decentraland marketplace and what they are selling in, in terms of those objects. But I'm curious. Whoops. Sorry about that. I'm curious, like from your perspective, what you think maybe some of those like really valuable metaverse assets will be. Right. Like we saw the JPEGs of the NFT area era were you know, became the most valuable. Like, what do you think is val- is going to be valuable to players in the metaverse? We're seeing, I mean, the past uh, year, we've seen some really significant 3D NFTs sold. Uh, so we've got like, um, one of our investors, Republic Realm, it's now called Every Realm, sold a yacht for the soup, for uh, Sandbox, for, I think it was $650,000. And this yacht um, allows you to travel between the the islands in Sandbox, the fantasy islands. Um, so it gives you these, you know, it's, it gives you this party boat, right, in the Sandbox. Mm-hmm. 
Um, then we saw, for example, Krista Kim's uh, meditation house, the Mars house for 500,000 as a place where you can go and relax. And I mean, obviously from, from then on, you know, she's just taken over Times Square, right? Every midnight. Have you seen, do you see that? That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then you've got, uh, for example, Andres Reisinger, who did, uh, this incredible 3d chair armchair, um, that. Uh, it was just, it just took design and art to the next level. So, I mean, these all have utility in the metaverse. Um, so I think as we move further, and this is something, you know, that we, we're very interested in at Metamundo is adding more utility to these NFTs, intelligent NFTs, super interesting. How can we, um, how can you put a, an asset, a building into Decentraland or into the metaverse that interacts more with the user um and then um extra functionality extra rights so we're also seeing for example star atlas are selling uh their spaceships already before game is live um as uh, high value 3d assets mm -hmm. um so it's it, they're going to have they're going to look cool they're going to have artistic credit and they're going to have they're going to give you some sort of functionality in uh, the metaverse too more to a, a follow-up to that then too like i know you guys are starting with the meta portal but eventually it will be a marketplace for like 3d assets of sorts give us a sense of like what the variety of assets that we might end up being able to find on metamundo so we're already working with um a select group of real top 3d creators um and some of the categories i mean nft art galleries are so popular right everyone wants to have the show off their art in the in the metaverse so we're working uh we've got a great artist working on a beautiful nft art gallery uh, a park actually so a, a more relaxing area um a fashion store um yeah we're also working on a villa a real and that has this villa has some really interesting exciting rooms that you will explore and you could invite friends and hang out with uh hang out in this villa so uh we're also talking we're also looking at dj venues um we've just yeah the, the, you're gonna see some really exciting reveals soon about an incredible dj venue we've been working on and um, so this is the some of the stuff that people are demanding at the moment in um in the metaverse and um but the sky's the limit, right? Like, where are we going to go? Like, let's take gravity out of the equation. What, what can we build in the metaverse? What is, what is this stuff that's really the people that, uh, and we're going to, we have to see, like, we, we need to get that feedback from people. We need to find out what's interesting, what's not interesting. We're working on so, districts. But so, yeah. So yeah, I mean, the districts and decentralized, a lot of stuff is cool, but like, you know, one thing that I think the metaverse can accomplish that we have yet to see or really i haven't seen anyone like propose this idea is this whole concept of let's say your favorite game is halo when can we take the halo environment and add that to a room so you can go in a room and like you can be in the halo environment not to play the game but to experience life like how you normally would so if you want to take your little villa pop it up bang but let's say you you're, you're done with halo you want to go to the next room next room is gta theme so you're in you know uh I don't know, San Andreas, right? And you got, you know, CJ's crib, exactly how it was, but you just copied the aesthetic. And then you go out of there and you're a, uh, and what was that? Candy one? Crush. <laughs> yeah, you have a Candy Crush or uh, what was that one game? It was the mirror where you were running. I can't, forgot what it was called. Uh, Temple Run? Uh, not Temple Run. There was, a, there was a game. It was Mirror's Edge. That's what it was. Uh, then you're in Mirror's Edge. And like, it's like, because like there's, like the game engines, right? Like if you create interoperability for me, that's what interoperability looks like. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I rocks with you on the fashion. I was in the DJ booths, but like you adding that value is just going to let brands come into these spaces. And, and like I talked about earlier, it's going to bring the, the celebrity creators in, right? The people that are going to, you know, basically crystallize these, these connections for the community, right? You need that. Um, and you need tools and vessels at which they can utilize and be inspired to create and, and do their thing. But for the the person that's gonna buy the yacht, like what do you do? What do you do next? Like under underground, like you know, is there like a Call of Duty like floor where you like it's like if I have if I'm a, if I'm a rich dude and I buy a mega yacht, 
you know, I got a basketball court on there. I got a helipad in there. I got a game room. I got a, a streaming media dungeon layer. I got a Zoom room. I got the Capitalist nightclub. And I got a nightclub. Yeah. Like, these, we sound like we're just, we're just going crazy, but that's what a mega yacht is, right? What about those different environments? Because it's, it's beyond just rooms at, at this point. It's, 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 it's bits and pixels. It's there's a lot to fill, right? A lot to uh, fill. There's a lot to fill, and and if we look at you know obviously the inspiration has been uh, Ready Player, uh, Ready Player One, and Snow Crash, and what about Ratchet uh, Ralph Two? I thought that was a really great interpretation of the inter- of the internet or metaverse. Definitely, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, having the characters appear, uh, you know. In, the, in real life, I mean, that's uh, that's the other way around, right? Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And, and I, I suppose just a note on that, like, I want to make a note with the Meta Portal, we're not forgetting about AR. Ooh, uh, that's, so... not, that's not that's not on the website, my guy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some alpha right there. Um, and we're looking into it, right? Like, why can't we use the Meta Portal in AR in real life to give you access to certain places? Okay. To transport you. Hey Tim uh, Cook, call Mark up. Call Mark yeah. from Metamundo. Yeah, I mean, he, let's say, uh, let's say Super Bowl's on, right? Like, why not? Uh, why not use the Meta Portal in the Super Bowl uh, to give you access to uh, to mm. somewhere to a special part of the stadium? Mm. Like, there's a lot of different ways we can use this thing. So it's we're we're gonna let we're gonna obviously ask the community and we're gonna listen to our community, but there's so much to do with 3D and and let's not forget about AR. So we've got to fill the VR world and we, we want to work on the AR in real life as well. Mark, we're just that time, but I, uh, I want to ask you one question. This is usually front loaded, but you know, you actually are a very interesting person. How did you get to where you got? So I actually have a background, um, in the architecture industry. Um, okay. for the past 12 years, I've been an entrepreneur. Um, and this is my fourth venture now. So each venture in some way or another has empowered the creator. Um, so 12 years ago, I was part of the founding team for, of a company called Arcello.com. That's now one of the largest social networks for architects and designers. So mm-hmm. we empowered them through publishing. Then I started a company called Crowdy House. We grew that to, that was an e-commerce marketplace for furniture makers. So we're empowering furniture makers to sell all over the world. Actually, 2017, also being an entrepreneur, I was really interested in ICOs because you, as a retail investor, you know, as the, as the little guy could own a little, own a part of an upcoming business, which was never possible before. And so I actually built uh, one of the first ICO platforms in the Netherlands uh, called Big X. It was a great looking platform. KYC worked great, and then and then the ICO crash in 2017. So we all know what happened then. But it, I've always been interested in empowering the creator, right? Leveling the playing field. So, um, wait, we got to call you out right there. You know, I know you're you're telling your story, but who are your favorite 3D creators? Just give me your top three right now. And they, they don't have to be in any type of order. It's just people that inspire you. So. I would say, you know, I am very architecture and design focused. Um, and one of the most pioneering 3D creators slash architects, you know, of the past, yeah, the, recently as well. But unfortunately, she's passed away, uh, Zaha Hadid. Mm-hmm. And some of the, you know, some of her, she, she really, her career took off later in life. Because her concepts were so abstract and so difficult to build, actually. It was only until not so long ago that building technology caught up to allow some of her work to be built. Um, yeah, so she's, she's mind-blowing. Um, and then I'm really inspired by um, you know, some of the 3D creators that I'm seeing um, in the NFT world at the moment. Um, and so there's, there's the Zaha did the architect, uh, I have to say, um, very inspired by 
um, the fabricant. Um, so mm -hmm. a really interesting uh, fashion, and they're pushing the limits yep. and then pushing the boundaries now for uh, wearables. Um, and then my third one. So who who's going to get the third uh, the third spot? Um, yeah, I think it would uh, it probably have to go to um, at the moment Andrus Rising yeah, just for his uh, his art, like the, the the some of the spaces he's creating in the furniture. Wow! All right, so we're we're, we're closing out, but you so you started a few companies. They were always for the creator. Uh, you in twenty seventeen, bring us home to twenty twenty. Got to close it out. Closing it out in 2020. Yeah, close oh. out. you're closing it out in 2022. You're, I mean, 2017, 2020. We know what you're doing in 2022. So, like, what's the yeah. gap in between then and then? Ah, uh, okay. So, between then and then, I actually, um, so having a background in architecture, believe it or not, I, it was always my dream to um, design and build my own home. So, uh, I was actually uh, helping other um, investors and, and VCs with their portfolio company as a consultant. So working on marketplaces and helping them. But then in the meantime, I actually where, designed... Where are you in the world when you do this? Well, so I, the, 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 the home that I bought, designed and built uh, myself um, is in Portugal. Okay. So I bought an old farm in Portugal um, with an apple orchard, made my own organic cider, um, so I designed you, that. You buy that online? Is that on a marketplace somewhere? Because you're a marketplace entrepreneur. So if you're making <laughs> apple, apple cider, Mark, Mark's off the grid, man. Why are you <laughs> off the grid? He's probably selling that cider though. I'm, How much is a bottle? I'm just sipping it myself. Oh, it's, just, it's, it's just it's just private at the moment. It's private. But I, I'm sure. Can we, I get Can we invest Six? in that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should turn that into an NFT, shouldn't I? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I have uh, my first NFT was actually uh, Crypto Kool Aid. Ah, okay, that's a good one. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, that's a bit of fun, but um, so this house in Portugal, it's uh, it's actually two houses, an old Portuguese farmhouse. So we we renovated that, made it very contemporary inside, but then actually we, so cork as a material is abundant in Portugal. It's it's grown on an, an oak tree so the the we've built a second house which is an extension to the farmhouse which is actually a cork clad uh building so it's super contemporary so it's one of the well, you know not many cork houses so did you take one of those mushroom bricks and, and put that uh, alongside it to reinforce it yeah you know what i'm talking about those bricks that are made out of mushroom Oh, the yeah, the mycelium ones, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that they're taking off as well, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, cork is just a is a wonderful material. It's uh, it's like insect proof. It's fireproof. It's super light. It's insulating. It's sustainable. It floats too, in case your house ever you know gets in a flood, you just float away. Yeah. <laughs> you can put it in your wine bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So yeah, that's that's what. I, but then I was helping. I was, I've been working and consulting on other uh, ventures and helping them. Um, so yeah, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I'm a tech entrepreneur, but then um, yeah, always with empowering the creator in mind. Been in, I've been in crypto since 2014. So I remember the Mt. Gox days um, and uh, I just, just, you know, blockchain as a concept is just empowering again, again, it's about, you know, empowering the creator and empowering people leveling the playing field right and that's uh i'm always a fan of uh, how technology can facilitate that that's fair well mark it's been a pleasure man you are definitely one of the more interesting interviews that we've had on the nft kids show i uh i enjoyed having you i'm sure ryan what, do, what, do, what would you say to say yeah, i'm i'm excited to, i'm i'm gonna try and get get myself one of the meta portals because I mean, just metaverse passes in general are such a hot commodity now, you know, like build, you know, now building your community for metaverse specific things. Like, I think that that's like such a, it's such a hot commodity. And uh, I think that you guys are going to build a great community. Yeah, I second that.
Oh, it's been, a, it's been an absolute pleasure, both of you. I'll, uh, and if you need, want me to come back on again, let me know. We got you. We'll catch you in the future. And we'll uh, actually not the future. We're going to catch you in the meta portal. You know what I'm saying? We're going to revive that real time.